We currently have the second longest world on the platform. Over 21,000 days. Nearly three years. Over 4,300 hours. And the builds are absolutely insane. Let me show you what we get up to. Y'all know what time it is. It's that block game time. Anyways, today we are doing our 21,000 day world tour video. It is crazy that we've gotten this far. The last time we did a world tour video, we were at 11,000 days and that was a year ago. We have doubled that since then. So I thought it would be a good point to come back and do another world tour. So within our 21,000 days of surviving, we have become the second longest world in the world. And I'm super excited to show you guys around. Let's get it. To start off, we're gonna start around our Japanese city. We're gonna go to the front of it. This is our Japanese city. We like to call it Midori no Machi. Uh, it's a build that took us around seven to eight months and it turned out absolutely fantastic. I am beyond happy with how this build turned out and stuff like that. Uh, it took us seven, around seven, eight months. It, 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 we have every single build in here has an interior, uh, it has purpose, and uh, I am beyond happy with how this build turned out. And for example, we have this house here. Uh, we have names on the doors because our viewers over on Twitch, uh, they can redeem houses and they can actually have a house in the world. So Mello here has redeemed the house. This is actually the first house I think I've made uh, in the city. Um, and uh, I think this turned out really fantastic. Um, every single house has an interior. So yeah, no need to show you every interior, of course, but. Well, I'll try to get into as much detail as possible with uh, my world here. Over here, we have our little panda area, which I think turned out absolutely fantastic. Uh, we got a bunch of pandas in here, absolutely chilling and vibing, vibing and chilling. You don't you let us see it. Uh, again, another viewer redemption thing that people can do. Uh, just name pandas in our world. Uh, flying over, you can continue to see the scale of things. There's a lot of houses all over the place. Uh, which is really, really cool um, and stuff like that. Um, when we keep moving forward and forward, we have another little spot over here that I think is pretty cool, pretty notable. So I'll show you this. This over here is our Japanese onsen. Uh, uh, it's basically just a hot spring. Uh, so when you go in here, you know, it's very, 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 very chill vibes into the water here. And, you know, you just, you just relax and vibe. Got some campfires underneath the stone here to give it a little bit more of the smoky effect that you see here. And uh, this is one of the... Uh, I actually had really a lot of fun making this little area here. I think it turned out really, really cool. Um, move on. Moving on. Over here, we have another little area which turned out really, really nice. Uh, so, kind of like... We're kind of on the village side of the city. Where the house is a lot more spread out. There's a lot more trees and stuff. Over here, it kind of the path kind of breaks off into uh, this little campfire area, which is really nice. You know, you see the, um, the the custom trees and stuff around here, cherry blossoms and stuff. But this over here actually leads to a really cool spot. Uh, this here is our axolotl pond. Um, this axolotl pond uh, has a bunch of axolotls in there, named after viewers, named after after pets, and all the other different stuff. Basically, a bunch of people just naming axolotls in here. Uh, it, it is a wonderful place, and I'm super happy with it. Uh, this is a big place for us uh, in terms of uh, breeding axolotls. Uh, we had a tradition that we did where we'd breed an axolotl at the beginning and end of each stream in attempts to get a blue axolotl, but we'll get to the blue axolotl at some point a little bit later. But let's keep it moving. There's so many places and so many spots that I have in my world. Uh, another spot that we have over here is another area kind of on the edge of the city here, um, of the village village side here. Uh, and this is where we have all of our dogs and cats. Another area for viewers to name uh, their favorite pets and stuff like that, which I think is super, super cute and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we have a bunch of cats and pets all over the place. And we go inside here. We have... Um, 
we have uh this little hardcore heart in the middle which i think looks pretty cool and just basically just simple stuff that we need to breed to continuously name dogs and the cats so yeah moving on uh obviously uh we have a very big this is a very big build if you <laughs> couldn't have noticed and this is Right here, what you're looking at right now is definitely, this part of the build is definitely my favorite. This is the downtown area. You can see it's very condensed. It's a lot of builds in a one spot. Got some pagodas, uh, big towers. Uh, I have the castle over there, as you can see in the background. We have uh, the temples, more temples, uh, custom trees, shops, a bunch of stuff. So if we can fly back here, uh, fly over. And land right directly into here. You can kind of see uh, where it kind of starts out. It, it's kind of the, the, the city and the, the village side are kind of divided uh, by this little uh, river here. And uh, when you walk here, you kind of get the, f the feels and vibes of, uh, of what we got going on. You know, we got the, the clothing hanging off of the top here and stuff. You know, have little things on the bottoms and sides. I think just the little details uh that matter right um and i really had a ton of fun making this uh walking through the city is one of my favorite things to do and i absolutely i absolutely love it i think it's fantastic uh over here you know we have some japanese uh lanterns i believe they're called uh which uh, are just kind of float slowly going up uh which i think look really really cool uh and uh yeah we got another little pagoda watchtower over here um where uh you know you get a nice view of some of the builds that we have in the world um like you see the the castle from over here this is one of my favorite spots just to kind of just like look out and just have a look at what we've built and even looking this way you can see some of the builds and even if i zoom in a little bit you can see a little bit of the, another build that's not related to this build over there but we'll get to that later which you guys will see um there's just so much to do and explore in this city. There's a lot of little details here and there. For example, we have our pink sheep from Alden here. And we got after, I think around after the 15,000 day mark, uh, which was really, really cool. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to sleep though. It's bedtime. Bedtime over. All right. So uh, I mentioned earlier something about a blue axolotl. Uh, so like I said, we were breeding axolotls every single day, basically. And we eventually got one. And when we did get one, it was a really big moment for me, and I was really excited, and it was great. Okay, dude. Oh! Uh, we celebrated, and we gave it a home in the world, and it was right here. Uh, but one day randomly, uh, which you can check out in our hardcore series, if you want to see how, like, kind of what went down, but one day in our hardcore world, we came to go visit it, and it was gone. Uh, it used to be in this little pool here in this hardcore heart, and it would be here for a, a lot of Minecraft days, probably around, like, uh, probably well over uh, 10,000 Minecraft days just chilling and swimming around in here. But for whatever reason, one day randomly, uh, I don't know if it got out or if it just died uh, or I don't know what happened. If anybody in the comments can let me know potentially what could have happened to my blue axolotl, uh, blue boy, uh, please let me know because me and my chat still have no idea quite exactly what happened especially considering that it was just chilling in the middle here and stuff like that for like so long and then randomly for one day for it to just be gone it was just like so weird to me um other than this being this this is this is the heart of the city uh it was it was, it was blue boy but other than that though uh this is a spot that we have a few other things uh we have a bunch of retired bows that we have here we have uh we have kind of just we kind of just have chilling the vibing and stuff, um and yeah we just any bow that gets really low which with this like for example this one, uh bozo uh we're gonna have to retire this one soon because I mean it'll eventually break down and we're gonna have to retire it. I don't know if I put every single retired bow that I've used in this world, but yeah we do we do I have put them in here 
And then this in the middle from another episode of the Hardcore Series, if you guys want to go check it out. Um, when we collected all the armor trends in one stream. In one stream. Uh, when we did that, uh, we decided to retire my old set of armor. And we left it in the heart of the city, right where Blue Boy was. But moving on, though, we have a bunch of other stuff that I got to show you in here. I'll try to show you as much as I can and uh, get through it. Uh, so we have these two temples here. One temple over here uh, we have kind of on this like little platform here next to the mountain. And then there's another temple over here, which I'll both show you. These temples are very important. Uh, they are my training halls. So I can see they're very loud. They, they, they don't stop very loud. What's up, local llama? Uh, but yeah, we have um, a bunch of villagers in here. They're kind of just chilling. Uh, we have all of our librarians in here. We can get a bunch of our different books from here. We have mending, all the works. Uh, and then on the right side of the temple, we have all of our masons, uh, which we use to, you know, get like quartz and stuff like that and all the good works. And we have extra emeralds in here and whatnot. This is basically where I usually spend most of my emeralds. Uh, now, you might be asking, how may I get my emeralds? Well, that is over here. This temple is more or less for making emeralds, getting emeralds, that sort of thing. So when I walk into here, we have a bunch more villagers. We have some farmers down here. We have some, and we have some clerics up there, uh, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and then uh, we have some toolsmith, which we, if you guys have an iron farm and you guys have toolsmith, that combo is unreal and you'll get so many emeralds from it i have emeralds four days four days just trading iron with these guys it's absolutely fantastic you get, it obviously it's a little grindy to set up obviously but once you get it set up it's so nice you get emeralds for days from that then on this side we have even more villagers we have some photographers we got some photographers over here uh, they're chilling the vibe. We know we trade for glass there and stuff, whatever, and whatever else. And then all the way down here, we have all of our Fletchers. We would trade sticks with them. I haven't done too much trading with the Fletchers, to be honest. Maybe one day I might replace them with uh, a different job at some point. But we have some Fletchers over there. And upstairs, for those wondering what's upstairs, there's nothing really much upstairs. Just extra storage if we ever do need it. So those are the two temples there. Uh, flying down here, we have... Uh, our super smelter that we have in the world, which I think is really nice. So we open the door here. This is where you collect your stuff after you're smelting it. Then we have this little wall um, barrier. And then, you know, we have some coal just laying around, whatever else. And how this works basically is you dump whatever you want to be smelted in here. And then as a fuel, you open this and then you put all the fuel that you need in here. Close that. And then that's essentially how it works. And then this auto smelt set, I can show you guys underneath. So this is behind the scenes of the super smelt I can see. I don't know exactly how many uh, smelters this is, um, but uh, it, it did turn out really, really cool. Um, and when I go up here, I can show you the redstone behind it. I'm not quite sure how the redstone works behind this. Uh, my friend Ricky Ticky time on Twitch uh, was helping me uh, kind of get the redstone working and having it uh, functional and stuff. Um, but um, yeah, this turned out really, really cool. And it, it smelts up stuff for us just fine. It's not the world's greatest super smelter. Uh, it's kind of just a basic one that I put together. But still pretty cool. Oh, whoops. It looks like I forgot to mention something. <laughs> I forget a lot of times. So don't worry about it, though. I get distracted a lot. Okay, but... Let me quickly go back to the heart of the city. I forgot to show you one more thing over here. Um, and uh, let me do that real quick. So underneath the uh, the heart of the city, we have a, another axolotl related thing. We have our axolotl races in here. Uh, you see, you've see, you seen one of the axolotl races in one of the episodes. Uh, if you guys want to go check out the series uh, in the description. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's a pretty simple system here. We have two axolotls over here, one axolotl here, one axolotl there. We have a tropical fish, a tropical fish there. And then let me flip this lever. Right. And then basically the first axolotl to kill a tropical fish wins. And that's usually how we do them. 
And then here's kind of the the records for uh, who is on top and whatever else. My boy, my boy uh, Kyle, for the longest time, he would just nonstop win. My boy has a record 24 wins. His axolotls would just never win. I Nobody understood why exactly, but it was actually insane. And we have a little tune going, and then we'd let them go. Matter of fact, uh, Kyle, the guy who uh, made uh, a Blue Boy song tribute, um, his axolotl was one of the fastest axolotls. We actually had to retire his axolotl because of how good it was. For whatever reason, this axolotl just would not lose. It just constantly would win. It was just better, I guess. Um, oh, whoops. Uh, but yeah, then we have the other axolotls that we used to race in here. But yeah, this turned out pretty cool. It's a little axolotl racing arena. All right, another area that, that, that has a lot of meaning to me. So for those who don't know, uh, I have spent a majority uh, out of my 21,000 days, obviously spending seven to eight months on the, on this, uh, on this city. Uh, I've spent the majority of time in uh, of my uh, streaming career on Twitch in this area uh, of my world. And uh, something very special happened to me. Um, and that was hitting Twitch Partner. At the time, uh, hitting Twitch Partner was a huge, huge milestone for me that I never thought that I could ever achieve. Um, especially at the time, I was even faceless. Uh, I've never did a face reveal and like... Uh, I remember people always telling me that you can be a content creator on Twitch, let alone YouTube, uh, without showing your face. Obviously, I've done a face reveal now, but being able to get Twitch partner without doing a face reveal meant a lot to me. And this tree over here, uh, I believe I'm going to be roasted if I mess this up, but I believe it's called a Wisterary tree. I always mess it up. I always forget the, the, uh, the pro proper pronunciation, but uh, when we go over here... Uh, we have a little book right next to the tree, and we have a very special pickaxe. Uh, this pickaxe in particular is the first pickaxe I've ever made in the world. It hasn't been used that much, obviously, but I renamed it to anything as possible, and uh, I put it right here. Uh, inside this book, though, uh, we have people who were there with me for the partner, uh, the 24-hour partner stream. Uh, and uh, who who redeemed this on Twitch and was there f with me when I hit partner. But yeah, it's a long list of a lot of homies that uh, were there with me and were there for that stream. And um, yeah, I'm just forever grateful for all these lovely people and the rest of my community, of course. Um, so this 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 tree and and book has a lot of meaning for me. Oh, it's nighttime. We gotta sleep, chat. Oh God. Anyways, uh, that was the, the tree there. Um, another little cool little spot before I go show you the, the Japanese castle that you see over there. Um, before I go show you that, I have another little cool little spot I could show you within the city, which I think is pretty cool. And that is a sewer. So the original idea for the sewer was to have it spread across the entire city. But with me working so hard on this build and just me kind of slowly realizing that, like, I, I have other projects that I need to do, I kind of just made a, a smaller scale of it. I didn't eventually, I didn't actually go through with making a full-size sewer. But we do have a sewer, though. So inside the sewer, uh, very fittingly, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but I have a turtle helmet. And uh, I wear this turtle helmet for a multitude of reasons. So I wear this turtle helmet for a multitude of reasons. One of those reasons being is because I'm part of Turtle Gang. And if you guys don't know what that means, I can explain it to you re real quick. Turtle Gang is about supporting all play styles. Minecraft is about having fun, and the way that you play the game does not matter. If you are having a good time, then you are winning. And the turtle shell is a symbol for that. So wearing this turtle shell slash helmet is uh, it's, it's a big symbol of just, you know, playing minecraft how you want and you know not letting anybody tell you otherwise uh whether if, if you want to play modded or you want to use a tnt duping in your world or whatever else you kind of just play how you want um and you can't really let anybody uh discourage you because of their opinion and you just kind of fight through it and you just do your thing you know um but yeah 
But going, th- continuing down this hallway here, uh, it'll lead to other things, which is why I brought up the turtle helmet. <laughs> so these are the original turtles that I used to get my first turtle helmet. And some of them are named um, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, these are... So we kind of call this little Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle kind of area here, which is why I put, which is why I put the the turtles in in a sewer, because uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and stuff. So I thought I would put that as a reference, you know. But um, I think this area looks really really cool. I'm very 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 happy with how this uh this looks here. But uh, yeah, moving on. Other this kind of small spot that I don't really get to show too too much on stream or just in general. Uh, when people are looking at my streams or something like that, is a little fishing shack. So inside the city here, we have this little fishing area right on the very side of the city, uh, which is really, really cool. And it's uh, this, uh, this little area right here. We have a few custom trees, some willows um, with some, you know, some greenery on top of it. And I think it turned out really, really cool. Um, it's a simple little interior for those who are wondering. Nothing too crazy in here. Um, but yeah, I think this, this turned out really, 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 really cool. Um, and then obviously over here, a little boat where we sometimes, we sometimes will just come over here and just relax while I talk to Chad and we do a little bit of fishing. Just like this. We just will do a little bit of fishing while I talk to Chad and stuff. And we'll get some fish and relax. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that is, uh... That is what I typically uh, will do to relax. I'll just do a little bit of fishing by this water mill here. And, yeah, that's another little area that I don't really get to show too, too often. Um, but, yeah. All right, I think I've showed you guys enough. I think it's time to show you guys the castle. Uh, so, obviously, um, it's not just the castle for those who are wondering that I'm about to show you. It's also, this castle is not just a castle. It is also built on top of a custom mountain. So this mountain that it's on right now is a handmade mountain, which took us just about seven days IRL to make. It, we, we spent every day, seven days straight, playing for like eight to 10 hours each uh, day to finish this mountain. Uh, and we, 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 so we technically built a mountain within a week. Uh, which was a lot of fun, and I'm very happy how it uh, turned out. Even have this waterfall here, um, but yeah. Uh, speaking of that, though, let's head up to the little walkway here and let's enter the castle. So inside the castle here, we have a few things. Uh, I'll show you that up there later. But right now, uh, underneath here, you see our little you see our little uh, storage area, and this is where my main storage is in the world. Um, and I'm very, very happy with this area. And um, this is where my storage is. Uh, I don't have an automatic storage. Uh, I get teased about it a lot that I don't have automatic storage or I don't have a real storage because it's not automated or whatever. But I personally just like having uh, a simplistic manual storage. Uh, and if you see, if you see, if you're a fan of my uh, YouTube series on YouTube. You've seen it. You've seen a lot that after each project, we have a bunch of shocker boxes to clean up afterwards, which doesn't take too long. It usually takes a maximum amount, of like probably like an hour to take care of, which is not too bad. Um, so, yeah, on the upper side here, we have uh, a start the spot where we start and end each Twitch stream um, on Twitch. Uh, we have a diorite throne over there. Uh, I did diorite simply for spite to be honest um i do think it looks really pretty but uh it's really for spite for the people who don't like diorite and whatever else but each one of these armor stands uh each one of these armor stands is actually from the video where we uh collected each and every armor trim we immediately put it on display uh so we have each and every trim here on display just to look at there's a silence there's tide uh i don't remember which one this one is hold on coast so that one's coast uh up here we have even more so some of the other ones which i think look pretty cool um rib which is another one of my favorites uh tide is another one of my favorites uh shaper is another one of my favorites this one however 
this Vex trim here is probably my least favorite. I'm going to be honest. I, I look at it, and I cannot stop thinking that it looks like a robe. I, I, I just, you think of armor, you think of, oh, you're going to go into battle. You got to stay protected, right? And then you look at this, it just looks, oh, my man's wearing a, my man is wearing a robe, bro. I, I can't not see that when I look at that trim. So that's probably my least favorite. The helmet is actually a little bit better. Obviously, I don't have the helmets on display, but still uh and uh yeah this is kind of where i chill and uh as you saw at the beginning of the video but yeah over here as well speaking of which uh you can kind of see the entirety of the japanese city midori no machi uh you have um the mountain here uh you have the 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 city side here you see all the buildings and stuff uh you have the village side here which you see spans and keeps going and going all of this is within 700 blocks range. It is huge. Absolutely huge. Uh, you see all the ponds there. Uh, there's a dog area over there and stuff. Uh, and then if you didn't notice, there is a little path here that leads to another build. That's another thing about my world is that uh, every most builds are connected via path. So you can go from one city to the next just following the path, which is pretty cool. And we'll visit there in a little bit. But I will show you guys one more thing. So, obviously, uh, I've showed you guys a little bit of my uh, city here. And I'm very, very proud of it, obviously. Um, but, uh, like I said, mentioned earlier, this is a custom mountain. And with every custom mountain, it's got to be hollow inside. Because there's no way somebody filled it up entirely. Uh, so, when we go through the waterfall here, first thing that you see is our nether portal. Which is kind of in this cool little room with spikes and stuff. There's also, for some reason, a sheep in here. He kind of just fell in here and I just kind of left him there. Leave in the comments what we should do with him. Because I, 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 <laughs> he's kind of just been here for the longest time. Uh, and I have no idea what to do with him. But he's kind of just been chilling there. Anyways, if you continue this way. So that's where we just came from. If we continue this way. We are now on the inside of the mountain. Uh, where we have a bunch of various farms, which I will get into a little bit later in the farm segment of the video, but I thought I would show really quick. So, now that I've shown you uh, Midori no Machi and uh, everything like that, and I, I, I'm, this is probably, there's, there's a few builds in my world that I like, my top favorites, this is definitely one of them. Uh, this, the builds, number one, number two, just the a amount of time that I put into everything and just the meaning behind a lot of the stuff in this build it is one of my favorite builds ever in the world um so yeah this is my main base of operations for the world speaking of bases uh this actually didn't used to be my main base this is in my spawn chunks matter of fact but this is not where we started in the world i will show you that build later but i think in terms of bases we should go to our old base our old base is uh towards this way, you might have seen this castle in the background a little bit earlier in the video when we started uh, started looking through the Japanese city here. But like I said, majority of my builds are connected via path. If you follow this path here, you it will lead you to a place that I like to call Mushroom Meadows. As you can see, a little bit of it in the background there, uh, which we will go to. So this right here is Mushroom Meadows. This is a build that I love and has a lot of meaning to me. Uh, this is the second build that we did in the world. Uh, this is, uh, I'm very, I just love this area. So many of you guys may not know, no, no, or even notice at first glance, like, oh, this is a pretty cool build. But all the grass that you see here used to be mycelium. So we completely exchanged every piece of mycelium for grass and then continued to build on top of it. And this is what it turned out to look like. Uh, we have a bunch of cool stuff here. Uh, we have this really cool lighthouse that I think still looks absolutely fantastic still. Uh, obviously, we have the village at the bottom, a bunch of houses. We have churches, uh, bigger buildings, and obviously the castle, uh, which I will uh, now go into more depth about this area. There's so much going on with this area. I think we could start off with the lighthouse. This lighthouse here uh, is uh, one of the coolest spots in my world, I think. Um, 
So for those who don't know, I've only really popped two totems in my world. Um, one of them was to a creeper, and the other one to was was to a prickling brute. You play both of those now. Yeah. Oh. oh my God! God. Oh. Okay, I popped another totem. Anyways, uh, popping my first totem to a creeper uh, was an interesting experience, but it could have almost happened while working on this building right here. So while working on this build, uh, I almost got blown up by a creeper, actually. Uh, luckily, I survived and I didn't even pop a totem. I was chilling. Um, but being at a mushroom island, you would think, oh, nothing's supposed to spawn here. How would you almost would have got? How did you almost get blown up? How was there a creeper? So all of this is Mushroom Island, Mushroom Island, whatever you want to call it. This right here is actually a custom island that I made, and is not considered to be a Mushroom Island. As you can see here, it is not. This is lukewarm ocean, and as you can see here, this is mushroom fields, meaning it's a mushroom island. So that being said, the spawn rates are probably a little bit more increased, maybe because it's directly right next to an area with like no spawnable spots. Uh, but yeah, uh, I uh, was working on it, building it, and then it dropped on me. Maybe, possibly. Oh my god! Bro, what? <laughs> Yo, what? Was 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 what? But luckily, I survived and I was absolutely chilling. But yeah, that was uh, my first true kind of scary moment in this world. Uh, almost getting messed up by that creeper. Um, as you can see, I, was, I sounded very stunned. But uh, we keep it moving, though. Nice custom tree here. We have, again... All of my builds has interior, so it doesn't really matter what house I go into. Again, same concept. People could would buy houses and stuff. Um, but, um, but, yeah, same concept. Every house has an interior uh, to it and stuff like that. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what, what house you go into. Uh, there's always going to be something inside of it and stuff like that. So, yeah. However, we are going to have to go show you guys some more interiors, though, because we have some important ones with some farms in it, matter of fact. I'm going to fully go into some more farms later, of course, but i quickly show you guys this. So over here, we have, uh, you know, just another interior, and it leads to, like, you know, upstairs. and has a bunch of other rooms and stuff and such. But this is actually where our cactus farm belongs, um, uh, which is really cool. This is... Um, under, underneath is where all the cactus does their thing. Another farm that we have in here is the same exact long building here. And that's in here. We have a sugarcane farm in here. This is no longer my main source of sugarcane. But this is where I used to get all of my sugarcane from. And this was right in here. Uh, this did us pretty well because we we're usually in this area. So it was usually running. And that is hidden behind here and stuff. So yeah. In terms of other buildings in this like upper area here, we have a church that uh, we have a church that we made a while back. Uh, we like to call this Kiwi Church. We have a little bird named Kiwi, which you might see uh, later in the video at some point. Uh, but yeah, this is a uh, this is a very old build that I did a long time ago. We have just towers laying around, a bunch of builds all over the place. Now, like I said, this used to be my old base of operations because it was very safe and stuff. Eventually, we just moved into the Japanese city, but in here is where my brewing little place is. I have another one back in the Japanese city as well that I forgot to show. On the other side here, we have our, our super smelter. Uh, same kind of concept here. You put what you need smelted here. Wait, no. You put what you need smelted here. You put your fuel here, and it comes out here. So we have some stuff left over from whatever I was doing last time. And then this is the kind of lever to turn it on and on, I believe. Um, this is a rare piece of... Uh, <laughs> Deep Slate Emerald Ore named, uh, yep. Uh, upstairs we have just, you know, just normal, normal store, n normal, like, you know, interior stuff and stuff like that. Over here is actually where we put the map for this spot, 
which I think turned out pretty cool. I think at some point we definitely gotta we definitely gotta do like a full world map. Uh, like at some point, I think that'd be really cool because considering all the builds that we have. So this was the other part of the other map. And th so this, this leads to the, the Japanese city, but from the Japanese city, this goes through here. And then this is where we are right now. Um, this is what the island looks like. I think Mushroom Meadows is one of the cooler maps in the world, uh, in my world. And I think it looks really cool. Uh, another reason why I would usually get teased for the longest times about my storage was my old storage room. So I used to build a lot and a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. And one thing that I had going for a long time was this was this uh, storage here. This was my old storage that I used to work out of. And uh, yeah, it's a lot smaller than the one that I have now, but it, it, it worked and I was very happy with it. And if you were to tell me to continue to live out of the storage, I would manage, I feel like, potentially. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. I'm definitely glad that I moved out and moved into the Japanese city, uh, Midori no Machi and stuff. But this worked for me for the longest of times, and it got the job done. We, we still have a few materials left over in here, uh, just kind of chilling. Um, but uh, yeah, this 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 worked for me. You know, this kind of the smaller side of the the village, kind of the smaller houses, super cozy. You got some villagers walking around from time to time, although. These villagers, bro. Oh my, listen, listen. They, sometimes they make me mad, man. They make me mad. Oh, bro. Don't get me started on these villagers. So we bred a bunch of villagers. We're like, oh, it would be really cool to have some villagers walking around in your village, you know, because it's into the village and stuff, right? Right? No. Bad idea. So we have a bunch of villagers chilling all over the place in the most random spots. And I'm about to show you some of them. I hope... Mojang one day makes the AI better because, man, oh, man, oh, man. I, I had some frustrating times to still being, I, I wanted it, them, I wanted the villagers to walk around, flourish, but no, so they end up in the most weirdest of spots. Hold on, shout out to my boy, Samson Smartfridge. I love that guy. Uh, as you see, we have a bee and a villager intensely staring into another villager. And this villager has simply just not moved because he's sitting and standing on top of a campfire. These two have been here for thousands of days. This guy has not moved. I don't know what's... Why are you like this? It's okay. He's trying his best. He's trying his best for real. Quick little shout out to my boy Chalky, uh, Chalky Milkshake for real for real. This is just another case. How have you done that? How, how have you fallen into your workstations? How have you done this? This was meant for the pigs to eat their food out of and have some water, but no, 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 no. You decided to yoink it for your job, and now you're stuck. Are you happy with yourself? Uh, what another lovely day in Mushroom Meadows. Oh, lovely. This is fantastic. You know, this is, this is great. This is great. You know, they're having a romantic time. You know, I could let this, I could let this slide. Other times, though, you know, they're just lonely by themselves. I feel bad. I also feel bad for that guy. I don't know how they met. They, I, I released them from inside this wall or one of the walls here. I don't know how they've managed to get here, here. Uh, there's another one there. I, I have no idea. Also, speaking of which, uh, also, this is another really random curse thing in my world. I have absolutely no idea how this man even happened. This guy must have, he somehow spawned in the roof. Um, this is on top of Dame's house. I have n literally no idea how, th how this has happened. <laughs> but it's just kind of, uh, this is just kind of a thing that happens, I guess, in uh, really long worlds. You can have random things happen like this. So, yeah. Next up, I'm going to show you the Axolotl Pond that we have here. So, this is the original, original Axolotl Pond. Um, this is the very first axolotl pond that I actually made. Uh, when we made the ja when, we, when we were making Midori no Machi, we decided to make a new one because this one got very, very crowded. It was, uh, it was, uh, yeah. Take, I mean, just take a look here. I mean, you can kind of see the issue here. 
It got it, it gets it got really bad. I had to remove some of them out of this area because of the lag. It got really, really, really bad. Uh, I don't know why the glass. I think the glass looks like this because I'm running sodium. But uh, this is just an aquarium here. Nothing crazy. It's got some fishies in the back. I don't know why the glass is glitching so much though. We have a bunch of cool little spots mixed in within this area, which turned out really, really cool. One of them being this little area right here. You have this little building over here. And this is kind of just a, a worn down kind of place. Super abandoned, got a bunch of overgrowth. Uh, but this isn't the only place that has this theme uh, that I don't, m most people don't actually know about uh, when it comes to my hardcore world. Flying over this way, behind some of the other stuff, we have kind of the secret kind of abandoned village um, on the backside here, which uh, not many people actually know about. Uh, when you walk into here, you can kind of see um, kind of this super rundown place. This house in particular has, he, we, had, we made a tree grow out of it. That's how abandoned it, it became. And I think you could even see the roots underneath in the cave here, the little mini cave here. Uh, some spore blossoms and stuff. Um, yeah, this so this this back little area we did this on the back sides of the the village. This is kind of like more of the abandoned kind of you know I, I don't know exactly what happened lore wise here, but you know definitely it got abandoned and uh, that's not it though. We also have another side on the back side of the castle with the exact same thing, an abandoned village on the back side of the castle as well. Same concept, very simple. Just some abandoned, abandoned houses, super overgrown, with some very small-scaled uh, spruce, custom spruce trees and stuff in the back. This has got to be one of my favorite views of the area, kind of just at the top of this little bridge thing here. Staring off and seeing the, the lighthouse. It's just so pretty. But, moving on. Uh, we Over here, we have our little uh, another portal. I have a nice little axolotl. Another, I guess it's another axolotl pond, technically. But a little a little lake going around it, and then this is our portal, a little portal here, uh, kind of a little, kind of like a little little mini castle kind of thing. Um, but moving on, I think it's time to show you guys the castle. So we have this little cute little uh, bridge over here, that and, and path that leads us to the castle, um, which is really really cool. Here's the front. This, this castle does indeed have a full interior. I'll be showing you guys bits and pieces of it here. The first thing I guess I could show is the bee farm. Shout out to my boy Lime Cookie. Uh, if you know, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is my bee farm here. And uh, it turned out absolutely fantastic. Uh, we got honeycomb coming in and stuff. And then in the back, we have just, you know, just a bunch of uh, spots to refill the uh, refill it and stuff like that. On this side, we just have more interior for the castle and stuff, which is really cool. There's some areas for food and stuff. You know, people having their lunches and then, you know, the kitchen back here. You know, they had to swing meat in the fridge or something like that. You know, the, the, the stove was running, that sort of thing. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, this used to be my main base. And it being my main base, you know, uh, this is where I would, like, chill out at the most. Uh, little master bedroom here, some extra storage. Um, and with that being said, obviously we had a spot where we would like start and start stream. And this is where I used to do that. Uh, this is the Blackstone Throne. Um, and uh, this is where I used to start and stop. Or actually, no, this is where I ended stream. Actually, I'm actually even forgetting. It's been so long since I've like come back here, but. This is where I would end stream each day. Where I would start stream, however, was actually up in this tower over here. This is where I would start and stop st stream every day. I would go into here. I would go look into the camera like this. I'd be like, it's block game time. And, you know, I would go on and play play some Minecraft. Um, you may have noticed that thing right there, uh, which is very important. 69 warning kills. So if you look in my stats real quick. Looking into my stats. And you go into the mobs category. We indeed killed 69 wardens. Yeah, that is right. So within 21,000 days, uh, we have killed 69 wardens. When they first released the warden, I was very iffy about it. 
I didn't like that it could shoot you through walls. I still don't like that it could shoot you through walls. So my decision was to be, uh, my decision was to not, not only kill it 69 times, but we also kind of decided to teabag it on multiple occasions, which you've seen, may, may or may have not seen in some of my videos. There it is, chat. There it is. This is how you kill the warden. 69 times. We have some allies chilling and vibing over here that we collected. We have a bunch of random allies throughout the world. So after all I've shown you in this area, you would think that's it. But I just have one more spot to show. With so much that I have, with all the things that I have in my world, sometimes you forget things. And one more thing I have to show you guys is the mushroom cave. So obviously we took over this whole island and I felt a little bit bad for the mushrooms. Because, you know, we kind of just, you know, took their home, you know. So in here we have a nice little spot where they have a home. Uh, this is mushroom cave. We have a bunch of custom mushrooms in here and then a bunch of random named mushrooms just chilling in here it gets pretty loud though you know ah! anyways uh on the top of here though uh we have a few rare mobs mainly halloween mobs uh we collected a few over over, over time uh there's a skeleton we have a zombie we have a baby uh husk the husk with uh iron armor we have another skeleton here We have a wither skeleton here that we brought over from the nether. Uh, there is one spot, though, that I am... I hope one day I could get this, but... We tried so hard and went for hours and hours and hours. I still have never been able to get this mob. And that is a spider jockey with the pumpkin head on it. And I, to this day, I've never seen one. And I hope one day I can get one and put it in here. That's why I have the ceiling as roof. Uh, ceiling as a uh, glass hole. If the spider would climb up, it wouldn't die. But yeah, that was the that was the plan there. We never actually managed to do it. All right. So with you, me showing you all of that, time to move on to another spot. And I think it might be time to show you guys where it all began in the world. Uh, and my first ever build that I've ever made in the world. And that is at the starter base. So we're just going to fly through the air here to get there. Because this one is one of the rare builds that actually does not have a path connected to it. Meow. Listen, if you play Minecraft and you've never tried to Riptide through your world, you're missing. You are 110% missing out. Let me tell you. Oh, obviously, you got to be very, very careful because if you hit a wall, you will pop a totem. Or even worse, die in game. But that's okay. Anyways, time to show you the next build. This... Right here is where it all began in my hardcore world. It's uh, always really nice to revisit this place. This is Hobbit Valley. Hobbit Valley is a really, really cool spot in my world. And uh, it's really cool. The con Let me tell you the concept of it. So this is obviously a Hobbit inspired area. I've never actually seen any of the Hobbit movies. So uh, don't kill me in the comments. But. I, uh, I did like this kind of hobbit hole kind of inspired area here. And this, this is within this valley here. And then obviously what you're looking at in front of you is a giant cliffside mountain. Uh, this cliffside mountain is inspired off of Paradise Falls from the movie Up. The uh, movie Up is, uh, Up is a wonderful movie if you've never seen it. You definitely should if you haven't. Uh, but yeah. So now that we're inside the build here, I can show you guys around a little bit. Um... So, some of you may be wondering what is the very first build I've ever built in this world. And if you have seen our hardcore series uh, playlist, and you've seen, you've seen it already, you may have seen it. If not, though, this right here is the first build that I've ever made in this world. So, inside the starter base, this is the first house I've ever made. This is my little starter home, which I absolutely love. So, when I enter it here, oh, this is bringing back so many memories. Uh... This here, uh, we have a little mini. So speaking of storage, this is even even smaller storage from the the get go. Just it's a just just a couple of chests, and I called it a day. Um, and yeah, uh, over here we have a little little bedroom. 
with our old blow bee farm. It's not really even even a farm. It's just two beehives. On this side, we have our old, even older sugarcane farm uh, that we have. Um, here we even have some carrots that we will grow and stuff. Um, just some random things on the wall and stuff from uh, different times. But uh, yeah. Uh, well, I guess I could quickly show you uh, this, this for like this for nostalgia reasons for me actually is where I used my old mine. So this world is an older world, obviously, and this is when um, the, the world went down to just zero. So this is my old mine. You see, we're on level eleven. This is where I used to mine for diamonds and stuff like that. Uh, this this seems so strange now because like nobody mines like this anymore uh, on like this level. Um, but yeah, this is, this is where I used to mine for like stone and redstone and diamonds and stuff. I really enjoyed just aimlessly mining for, for hours and it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, but yeah, this, this is, this is kind of the old mine. I thought I would show it cause it's, uh, not everybody, some people might be new to Minecraft and they might not even have realized that, uh, this is how we, people used to get diamonds. Like obviously you would go caving. But this is what strip mining used to be like. Swimming back up, trying not to drown. Oh God, it's fine. Don't be righty. All right. <clears throat> um, all right, so that is the starter house. Uh, you may have noticed also uh, around the area that we have these little cases of different things. Uh, for example, this is a, a gold one. Is that a piece of dirt? That must have been an enderman. Endermen are the worst. Oh my days. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that at, at another point. But anyways, uh, there's, uh, that's the gold one. Uh, we have, ouch, we have our emerald one here. We have a diamond one over there. And as well as a iron one. Uh, we did not decide to do another right one because I am not getting that much another right blocks. Absolutely not. <laughs> but, uh, so for those who don't know, this actually used to be a... A village here and we kind of started off here did a bunch of trading and stuff and we transformed this entire village into this area uh but where what happened to the village villagers and stuff so going in here is our training hall a bunch of villagers you, you, we will get to that sound in a second please try to ignore it i'm gonna talk a little bit louder this is where our villagers are <laughs> um and yeah they're chilling bobbing bobbing and chilling uh, this is where we used to breed them and stuff. We have even more villagers below here and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really basic setup at the time. Over here, we have our little melon farm. Pretty basic stuff. Oh, this is filled to the brim. That's a later me problem. Flying over here. Flying over here right next to my house, we have some of my old friends. Some of my old friends and pets. Um, this is Alfonso. This is... This is this is this is a really fast horse that I got earlier on in my world. I remember this backstory for this horse is kind of sad. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I remember so. <clears throat> yeah, early game. Early game was rough sometimes. You know, you had to do what you had to do. So you know, I was uh, going around killing horses. Ah, anyways, you know, I I, I might have killed this family in game, uh, but eventually, you know, I, I I hit him once, and then I saw how fast he was, so I kind of took him as my own. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. He's in the, you know, he's, he's been, he's been doing great. I love my boy Alfonso. <laughs> so, sorry about what happened back in the day. Oh, God. This. Right here. Don't even worry about this. Th he's just bungee jumping for all. This over here is our old wolf farm. This actually looks wise from the outside. This is probably my favorite build in the area. Just the the, tr the custom tree on top, and then also the the waterfall in the background, and just how this shapes out and stuff. I I really like how it looks like from the outside. Anyways, uh, inside here we have our old wolf farm. I have not touched this in forever. I think it's probably not even running anymore. Oh wow, I'm actually surprised. I mean, I guess I'm not in this area for it to be running. To be fair, but yeah, over here we have our even older super smelter. Um, which was pretty cool. Uh, this is probably the most underwhelming map for the area. 
Uh, because it's, everything is on the walls, it's a little, everything, every, all the builds are kind of on the walls and stuff. It's kind of underwhelming. It doesn't look like much. It kind of just looks like a few paths, which it, which it is. Uh, it's kind of an underwhelming map a little bit, but it's still the map of the area. One last thing to show is Frog Mouth Cave. Frog Mouth Cave was a custom cave, the first custom cave I made in this world. Uh, I really have a, uh, I really love love this cave, man. Um, going through here, we have, we'll go to the main part of the cave first, um, which obviously this is this was made back in one point sixteen point five. Uh, so this is a long time ago, man. This is a long time ago. Um, so I made my own custom stalactites and stuff. A little bit of water below there and stuff. I think this area turned out really cool. Um, and then we have a black stone throne. And on top of it, you might see this little guy. Now, we found some rare things in, in this world. And for this one in particular, he did not spawn a diamond armor. But we did find him. And I, it's very rare for me to see... A naturally spawned, uh, naturally spawned, uh, zombie villager, ba baby zombie villager. So I kind of took him as my own. I gave him diamond armor to see if he would pick it up, and he did. And this is the, uh, <laughs> this is his name. Uh, we love him. He kind of just shows here, uh, in this cave and stuff. But, um, I think the lore is that he's kind of the ruler of this area. I have no idea. He's just doing his own thing for all. Let me not forget the Wall of Fame. This in here is basically an OG wall, I would say, if I had to describe it. Um, but yeah, there's various different people uh, over over time that has uh, been 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 with us uh, through the journey um, and stuff like that. So yeah. That seems to be a majority of everything that we have in this area for the most part. Uh, one more thing I will show you, though, is uh, behind this waterfall. As you can see, I like putting things behind waterfalls. If you didn't notice. This is where our dragon egg is. So there's the head. And then we put the egg right in the back of this little mini custom cave here. Uh, this is where our dragon head has sit for the longest amount of times. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is where we put it. And uh, it's a really cozy little spot for to have it. I, I thought it would be fitting. You know, this is our first area. Uh, you know, I, this is the first dragon, you know. And, you know, and just having the egg here is really cool. But obviously, with every single custom mountain, there's going to be... It's going to be hollow on the inside. So going behind the walls here, this is my old... Uh, Iron Farm. It doesn't really run anymore because I'm never really here. Like I said, um, I'm never really here for it to run. Although it does have some iron in there. Uh, it's not in spawn chunks because we moved all the way out here uh, for the village. Then eventually went back to spawn to build the Japanese city. Our time to show you guys what that noise was earlier. Uh, so we have that Iron Farm, but, uh, you know, sometimes it'd be like that and sometimes, you know, you get a natural, like, you know, just an accidental iron farm. Anyways, um, that is kind of just the inside of the mountain. This uh, kind of just curves all the way around and stuff. Uh, I just see a, a lot of it was handmade, as you can see. Uh, up until here, this one's when it was actually a uh, little hill. But, um, but yeah, I've done a lot of terraforming in this world, so a lot of mountain building. Time to head back and uh, go show you guys some more builds. And we're back in the city. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys the next build real fast. I think I'm going to go to the end. There we are in the nether. I don't actually have any builds in the nether other than farms, which we'll, I will get to later in the video. Um, the next build I'm going to show you is going to be my end this is the first step to our end build here. Uh, this end build turned out really, really cool. I'm actually really excited to show you guys. Uh, probably one of my favorite builds in the world, to be honest. This build is a really cool build. It turned out really cool. We have a lot of shulk everywhere. So it sounds very, you know, mystical, like weird, you know. Something not, not natural, obviously, because it's you know, in the end and stuff. So I thought it'd be fitting. But let me show you guys.
this right here is the Empire. The Empire is a build that I did for a viewer. Uh, this is the very first, the very first Empire I've ever made for somebody. And uh, it turned out absolutely fantastic. I am beyond happy with how this turned out. Beyond happy. Um, from all of the, the houses, fantasy-inspired houses, uh, to the castle in the middle, to the, the, the crystals and stuff. This turned out flipping amazing. I am beyond happy with how everything turned out. Uh, we have some um, we have some snakes coming out of this magenta fog over here. We have these amethyst trees and stuff. There's so many cool little things uh, about this area and everything. This is another cool place where you can redeem houses. I see Melo got another house here in the end as well. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, just some more of the simple interiors and stuff. Nothing crazy. But every every building has an interior, which is the most important thing for me. Yeah, these snakes turned out really, really cool. I think the thing that I like about it most is probably the eyes. We use banners there for the eyes to give it that, like, snaky look. And I think it turned out really, really cool. And then obviously, we have flying up here. You know, you can see the crystals, which I think the crystals look absolutely fantastic. Uh, I might be reusing these crystals at some point for some other builds. Uh, whether it's for an, uh, another world, like the server that I run, or if it's for another build in the hardcore. But yeah, I think these crystals look really, really cool and really uniform. I'm really happy with them. And of course, we can't forget about the castle itself. Uh, so we have a little small interior in here, nothing much. Uh, like I said, this is the first empire that I've done for somebody. If you guys know what an empire is, empire is a redeem in my stream where you can get a build in my world and have it dedicated to you. And you can get a video behind it for that build as well. Uh, this is Swalance, uh, one of my Twitch mods. He was able to redeem it for 500k channel points. And he was the first ever Empire in my hardcore world. Um, but yeah. Underneath here is where we kill Withers and stuff. Right underneath. Um, which is pretty cool. Over here... Um, we have Randy 2.0. So we... You're gonna chill? Oh, God! My bad for a I had to step away for a second. He's so loud. Uh, so, Rand the point of Randy being there is to remind me to turn back on my mob sound. So, I'm not sure... You might have remembered earlier we showed the my first totem pop. And with that first totem pop, uh, the reason why I popped that totem is because I forgot to turn my mob sounds on after using the Enderman farm. And... Uh, so I turned it down because I was using the farm and I forgot to turn it back up. So anytime I go here, uh, I have to look up, look him in the eyes and make sure that my mob sounds off. Make sure I can actually hear my mobs. Okay, damn. He's mad. Uh, he's 2.0 because the other one died. Because uh, it was a little bit too close to the killing chamber for the weather. Uh, for the weather. Uh, for the, yeah, for the weather and stuff. And uh, yeah, he died, unfortunately. But uh, that's okay, though. We got Randy 2.0 for real, for real. He's a little bit more angry than the original Randy, but it's fine. One more thing I'll show you, just because I'm already here and might as well be, and might as well show it, is this little, um, this little shulk farm that we have. It's really bad. I'm gonna be honest. So it works pretty simple. I come here with like dirt blocks, sand blocks, something like that. I fill this little area in here, and then. And then all the shock will spread. It's a really bad shock farm. This used to be my XP farm at some point, but yeah. Flying back, though. That's really it for the Empire. I think this area is really, really cool. I'm very happy with it. Uh, but yeah, moving on. Let's go show some more builds. Ah, we're back at Midori no Machi. But we're going to use Midori no Machi to get to the next pop. So like I said earlier, a lot of the builds are connected. So going to the edge of the city here... We have a little path then this path goes for a long ways it goes for thousands of blocks uh, and this is gonna lead us to our next build so I will see you guys there Meow. we are here you can see glimpses of the Ravens flying to the sky here and the glimpse of the build there yeah this build is really really cool this build is the mods marshland this build turned out absolutely fantastic. We got two ravens flying through the sky majestically. Got another raven here looking over the area. We have this nice little cool little castle going on. We have a nice little custom swamp village. 
uh, as well as a custom forest over there, which turned out absolutely fantastic. This build is dedicated to the entirety of my Twitch mod team. Um, I, I absolutely love my mod team, so I made them this build. Uh, like I said earlier, every build has an interior here. Uh, you can boat through here. I put some boats and stuff. It's a very boatable area, which I really enjoy. I see all the interiors are done and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start off by showing the forest, actually. The entirety of this forest is custom. Uh, there used to be old swamp trees here, which we replaced with custom ones. Uh, why? Because I like making things better, which I think I pulled off pretty cool, pretty well. Uh, we have a few frogs that we transported over here as well, just kind of chilling and vibing to help with the, the, the swamp vibe uh, and stuff like that. And then we have an armor stand data pack. Where we put some of the mods kind of chilling through here. That's my boy Menashe. Um, but yeah. But yeah, this forest is really, really cool. I really enjoy just walking through it and absorb absorbing the vibes and stuff. One more thing about the forest here is we have this uh we have this uh portal here, which turned out really cool. Uh big tree, and then we have this like uh hanging off of it, which I think is really, really cool. I think I think it turned out really, really nice. On to the castle. Uh, interior, uh, over here, uh, like I said, this is for my mod team, so I tried to fit in as many of my, uh, my Twitch mods as I could via the armor stand data pack, uh, I use here and there, I don't use it too, too much, um, but yeah, here's spooky crocodile, that's my boy right there, uh, there's Pern, there's Stella, um, there is Zandingo, my boy, he's running from lava, classic, classic Zan. Um, Snap Ducko, Monkey Wrench, um, Pizza Guy, Dana, uh, Llama, Short Stack, Rain, Gabby, Sandy, Che, Swalent. Just uh, the whole crew. Don't you let us see yet. I can't forget about my boy up here. My uh, uh, he, my 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 good friends, Lime Cookie, Siri Bot as well. Lime uh, has helped with a lot of the videos in the channel. Uh, I majority edit most of my videos, but like I get a lot of good editing tips and, and tricks and stuff like that from Lime. And Lime has done some full videos on the channel as well as I usually leave it in the description. So that's my boy right there. He's also one of my mods as well. Uh, I love that guy. Also can't forget about my boy. I definitely can't forget about my boy Dame over here. He is, he is falling down. Uh, popping totems to lily pads. Don't you let us see it. Speaking of don't you let us see it. It's also my boy, Kyle. He's chilling and vibing, vibing and chilling. Over by the bird. Just vibing out. But yeah, overall, this build is one of my favorites in the world. And I am, uh, beyond, beyond happy that I, I, I did this build. I'm so happy with it. Let's head back onto the path again. We're gonna go backwards a little bit. And we're gonna go to the next build. Next build I'm about to show you is another build that I did for a viewer. Uh, her name is Harley. Uh, she redeemed this build for 500k channel points. Uh, this is a really cool build that I did. Uh, and I'm very, 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 very happy with it. Um, so kind of the vibe here is kind of just walking up this path here. You know, it's very run down, beat down and old. Kind of the point. And as you approach here, you start to look up. And you start to see this. You see a view of a castle and a creature that has haunted this land. This is the ruins of Feluciana. This is a really cool build that I think turned out really, really cool. Uh, a little, a little bit of lore with it, just mainly being the. This is supposed to be a Wendigo. Uh, that kind of a very big Wendigo that kind of took over the land and has made everybody run away from the place. As you see, you have some. Of the buildings with like the tops completely ripped off and completely abandoned and overgrown and stuff uh shops abandoned and everything like that like this area is just very very cool uh i'm very happy with it. i see the inside of the houses are even torn to shreds and stuff like that uh this is a very 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 cool spot that i uh really like um but yeah I have like a little, even like a little mini arena here as well that is just completely torn down and stuff. It's just very, 
very torn down. The, the view from above is pretty cool. Uh, I'm very happy with how this looks from this angle. Um, my favorite part is definitely the castle and the Wendigo itself. Uh, if you couldn't tell, this is also a cu another custom mountain. There was a mountain there before, but we made it a little bit bigger so we have a better spot. Oh, it's raining. So we have a better spot for the castle itself. And we have a bunch of custom trees on the side. Uh, around the side here, some more custom trees. And this little cave path that leads all, wraps around. Um, I'm going to break the wall just to show you guys that it's a custom mountain. Uh, but as you can see... Uh, this is the original mountain, and then we decided... Originally, I was going to put the castle here. I was like, that's just way too low for the castle. So I decided to make another mountain, as I do. Uh, I do a lot of terraforming. Um, but, uh, yeah. Also did some other land elevation before, as well, for the village, as well. Which, there's a whole video on this build, if you guys want to check it out. And see how we made this build from start to finish. Uh, if you are curious flying up here uh, We have the inside of the castle which is also kind of torn apart and kind of worn down and stuff um, There's a throne here that is empty uh, But for good reason, I'll show you guys in a second uh, And then right here is the map of the, the area which is uh, probably one of my the better maps uh, I, I like this map. I think it's a pretty cool map of the area. I think it turned out really, really cool. And then there's a little hole over here that we fly out. And so flying up here towards the Wendigo, you have Harley, which is why she's not on the throne. She's actually just fighting the Wendigo and doing her thing. Uh, but yeah, this is her empire. This is she's she's trying to defend it as it's getting torn to shreds by this creature. So uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool build. Let's move on to the next build. Now, I would say we'd be going, heading back onto the path here, gamers. But actually, the next build is uh, is not connected to the path. But it's for a really good reason. And you're about to see why. It's not connected to the, the path by any means for a good reason. And that's because it's in the sky, actually. And you're about to see. This right here is one of my favorite builds in the world. This is the city... Of Enchantia. I uh, absolutely am in love with this build. The City of Enchantia is one of my favorite builds in the world. Uh, we have a Pegasus flying through the sky here in the middle. We have a bunch of custom clouds, fantasy trees, uh, houses on the clouds and stuff. I am in love with this build. I love the blues, in that, we, blues that we have. We call it the City of Enchantia because of the gradients that we have on the roof. So if you look at the roof, it kind of has like this gradient that goes into like lighter colors. It's almost like it's enchanted. Like you have the normal roof color and then it's kind of like like glowing a little bit. So it's kind of, you know, almost gives like an enchanted look. Which is why we called it the City of Enchantia. Um, but yeah, this build turned out really fantastic. Like I said earlier, it doesn't really matter what build you go into. But uh, it is, um, it is uh, fully decorated. Uh, full interiors and stuff. And yeah, Froggy was here for all for all. Moving on though, uh, we also have a castle interior. So not really cool. Inside the castle here, uh, we have a quartz throne in the middle. I think it's very fitting for the, the quartz build. Uh, the quartz took so long to grind, uh, but I'm always here for the grind, as you can see. <laughs> Having a, a 21,000 day hardcore world. Upstairs. Upstairs, we have uh, just a bedroom here, which also has the 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 map of the build. Uh, this is uh this map is okay. Uh, I think uh, the map is pretty cool looking. Uh, I think there's definitely better maps in the world though. Uh, I think the build itself is definitely way better than the map. Uh, the map is just all right. Now that I've shown you the city of Enchantia, it's time to move on and show you guys what's next. Let's go. We're going to head back to the path and we're going to head to the next build. Let's go. For the next build I'm about to show you is definitely one of my favorites. It's for my good friend. I made it for my good friend, Dana. Actually, one of my favorite videos that I've made as well, just in general for uh, YouTube. Um, if you guys want to go check that out as well, it's going to be in the description. But heading up closer on this area, this is a really cool build. Um, this 
is the Mines of Molston. This turned out absolutely fantastic. Uh, we have a uh, kind of, I forget what you call these. Um, we have kind of like the ship flying through the sky. Um, and then we have this uh, manor at the top of this little hill here. This custom little, little hill here with the manor on top of it. But the, the highlight of the, the, the entire area is the ravine. Uh, we hand dug this ravine out. So every everything that you see here was hand dug out. And we had to rebuild up the walls with this little grating that you see. We have blackstone leading into mud to deep slate, into basalt to coal into stone. Yeah, this is all dug out and then rebuilt back up with, with the walls a little bit. Um, we in my world uh, i have never duped a single item in my world i've never tnt duped uh, i don't do any duping in of any sort uh so uh, we always do mining by hand um matter of fact if you look at the stats uh we have two million stone mined in the world and that's not just from this project there's another project that we did a lot of digging for but yeah we uh we dug this out in about we we were grinding it out to be fair. Grinds out in about nine days, and when I say nine days, I mean the IRL. And of those nine days, we did bare minimum like eight to nine hour streams. We were grinding this project out. We were doing it, uh, but yeah, jumping into the ravine itself here, so you guys could actually get a better look and stuff like that. Um, this is just a such a phenomenal build. Ouch. I am, I am beyond happy with it. Like, sitting inside here is one of my favorite things to do in here. Just not even, like, you know, you don't have to do nothing. You just kind of just look and just feel the vibes in here. It's just such a great feeling. And, of course, your boy did an interior for every single build uh, in here as well. So there's always going to be a little bit of an interior for these houses and stuff, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I try to keep this like steampunky vibe going for the entirety of it. I tried my best anyway. Uh, we have all these mine carts. Oh, this one got stuck. Well, that's what I'm here for. There we go. Um, but yeah, we have all these mine carts going and going and doing its thing. Um, but yeah, we have this mine cart system here that has a donkey on it. That donkey, I, I had a little bit of history finding with, with that donkey. He uh pushed me into a hole. All right, now we got to bring it back uh, 7,000 blocks, champ. Oh! But right next to this donkey here, we have something very special. We have the rarest thing I've ever gotten in this hardcore world. And that right there is this zombie villager with diamond full diamond armor my reaction to it was absolutely insane and i was freaking the hell out oh my god ah! Whoa! what ah! Yeah, that, I was so, so stunned when I found this guy. I could not believe my eyes when I, I got this guy. It was unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I had no words. I, I was so stunned. But yeah, we decided to trap him. Since we found him in this build, we decided to put him in this build for Dana. And uh, yeah, so the rarest, my rarest mob ever is forever just going to be in this cage. Looking off into the steampunk ravine here and stuff. But yeah. Also just have a bunch of other cool little details in here. We have a bunch of pulleys all over the place carrying various different items. As well as this big pulley system where we have all the ores. Uh, well, not all the ores, but some of the ores. We have some gold. We have some iron. We have some redstone. We have some, some diamonds. That's a lot of diamonds. Uh, a lot of those diamonds are actually just found from digging this out, to be honest. And then, uh, and then we have some copper over there as well. This kind of on that little system there. Um, I think it turned out really, really cool. As for the ship here, I'll give you guys a closer look. It's nothing too crazy. Um, it's a pretty simple, simple ship. This is flying through the sky. Does have some storage on top of it, uh, with nothing actually in it. But uh, it's a very, very simple ship, and it's also really nice to look down at the build from over here. 
uh, and kind of see it in its entirety. Uh, I really like looking lo looking from above. It looks really cool from up here too. It looks crazy. Moving on to the manor itself. Uh, let me go over here and show you guys and then talk about it a little bit. Another little pulley over there. Just random pulleys and, and pipes all over the place. So this is the back entrance here. Uh, this is probably my most proudest thing I have in this build. We got an elevator. This took me three hours to make. <laughs> I you know it, to some people it might be oh that's a simple that's simple redstone. No, nah, I cannot do redstone. This was a struggle. This was a struggle. But yeah, obviously we have an interior for everything. There's Dana. Dana's chilling. There, we, uh, she has her IRL dogs here with her, uh, chilling on the job. As uh, she kind of is the leader of this area. And is uh, in charge of the mines and stuff that goes on in the mines of Malston. I got some more pipes going through here. Some other random uh, interior stuff that doesn't really matter too, too much. Um, but yeah, we have a little uh, computer right here. As well as the map. This is another really cool map. Just because it looks... It's, it's not something that you see every day where you see this. Like It almost looks like... A, I don't know. It just, it just looks really, really cool. It looks so, so cool from over here. Um, but yeah. That's another really cool build in my world. But yeah, that's just another really cool build in my world that I uh, absolutely am in love with. I uh, This is definitely a top three, top four build in my world, in my opinion. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Just from the, the fun that I've had here digging this out and just the crazy mobs that we have found and stuff. Like, There's so much going on in this build that I just love. But uh, anyways, let's move on to the next build. Onto the path we go, and we shall continue going. This path in particular is a long one. It, it It's so long that I had to give it a little bit of variation. You know, I started beating up the path a little bit. Then I went to this cave, and then, you know, then I... Uh, then I uh, started switching up the path to a dirt path. You know, it, I had to do... I, I, I uh, It was a lot of fun doing these. I have a lot of fun doing paths. I need my rockets. Okay, so this is another build that uh, we worked on, and uh, I think it turned out really, really cool. Uh, as you see, that we've gone, we've been walking so long now. Now we're in like a snowy biome. You see glimpse, you see a glimpse of it over there. Uh, we even have this bridge over here that leads to it, and I'll, uh, I'll meet you guys over there. So this is the city of Vemheim. This is another empire that I did for Vimalding. Uh You may may be saying, wait, what? The pink sheep. Uh, Vimalding is also a Twitch streamer, and uh, his, 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 whole, his whole thing is uh, pink sheep's. That's why he's named, uh, I named I made the pink sheep after him. But anyways, uh, this is the area that I made for Vimalding. Uh, Vimalding is uh, a really cool guy. And uh, so I wanted to make something really cool for him. And we decided to go with a kind of this like Viking kind of inspired area here. Got some, I think, I think I, what I like most about this area is either the, the church or these boats here. These very simple boats. But I think they look really, really cool. I really, I really like them. I think these boats look absolutely fantastic. Um, as well as we have this little serpent. And this is off in the distance. Uh, I kind of want to put it more in the distance and not make it a focal point of this build. I wanted it to be kind of just something kind of in the background to kind of look at. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's like, oh, is, what is, it? is that like, a, you know, there's something in the fog going on. You know, you just see it. It's like, oh, sound like a, what type of creature is that? You know, kind of thing, kind of mystical kind of vibe. But yeah, every like 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 every build, every village that I've ever made in this world, um, has an interior. Uh, as you can see, when you go into the house, there's an interior of some sort that you could look around and go with. Uh, the nice thing about having an interior for all of my builds is that whenever I visit the area and I, let's say I don't have a bed or something, I could just go into a house and I could just quickly go to sleep as long as that house has a bed anyway. But there's a bunch of random details throughout this little uh, village here that I really like. You know, we have the backside here, uh, another little dock over here, kind of just chilling and stuff. And we have a bunch of different little spots where people can hang out by the campfires and stuff and just relax and everything. And it's really, really dope. Uh, we even put some hay bales underneath to give it a bigger smoke, uh, I believe. And I think not really cool. Uh, but the last thing I'll show you this area is Vimalding's. Uh, church that we made from him. I forget, I believe it's called the Stafe Stafe Church. 
you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a uh, it's a really cool build. Uh, and to here, this is where Vimalding is himself. Vimalding is over there. He's chilling with uh, his uh, IRL dog Nikki. He's chilling. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> forgot I did this. Is there anything on page one? No, I don't think there's anything on page one. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is just a genuine, generally really cool area. Uh, we have his office over here, I believe. Uh, and then we have like uh, I believe it's called a concession thingy, and we have uh, one of the one of the good friends of the stream, Spookles, on the other side listening in and stuff. Yeah, this area is really really cool. I really I really I really like it. I really like it. Let's go to the next build, gamers. All right, we are back on business. We're back on the path here, and we're about to go to one of the more meaningful builds uh, in the world. This is our creeper farm. A rare build that's actually based around a farm. Um, most of my builds are aesthetic for the most part, but uh, this is this is a really meaningful build for me. Um, this is what I like to call the cherry bomb forest. It is a custom cherry blossom forest. Uh, each and every tree is custom, and we have a lovebird flying over it. Um, flying over the whole area and uh yeah so just to just to talk about this bud a little bit before i show you a little bit more uh the bird that you see in the sky here is uh a, a friend a friend of mine had the bird pass away uh the bird's name was kiwi uh and uh as tribute we uh made made kiwi uh flying to the sky uh for our creeper farm build here and uh, that's why that's why we did this build. Um, I was very sad to to hear about it, the news and stuff. So I uh, I, I asked if I could uh, pay tribute by doing th this build. Uh, you guys could also go check out that video as well if you guys want to see how we uh, made this entire forest and and did the bird and stuff. But um, yeah, let's actually get a closer look at it though. So as you see, walking through the forest here, it's a very very cozy vibe. Uh, we have the petals falling down. I absolutely love Mojang for not only adding these, like, leaves to the game, but adding the particles to it, too. It just enhances the the, the feeling walking through here. As well as, you know, we have some of the new flowers from the sniffers. Speaking of the sniffers, um, we have a few kind of hanging out and vibing in the area. Um, some of them are named, some of them are not. Uh, let me see if I can find my the first one. First one, I named it Bantha. Here's my boy. Yeah, this is Bantha. Um, you can eat that, my friend. Uh, but yeah, this is Bantha. This is the sniffer. Sniffers are really cool. Look, look how big they are in comparison to me. They're, they're really cool mobs. Uh, I very, very love, much love them. I can't wait for Mojang to, to, do, to do some more stuff and add continuously add more cool things to the game. I'm uh, all here for it. So you guys saw the build from a distance, but um, Kiwi... Uh, is used as an AFK spot, and so if I go into here, if I go into here, this is where you AFK the creeper farm, and that's the creeper farm below. It's a little message for um, for for Kiwi, but uh, yeah, this uh, this build this build turned out really, really, really cool. I'm very happy with it and stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, the creeper farm is pretty good. Uh, I don't have a particular design that i used uh i don't fully remember uh i kind of just uh did it i guess um because i've built so many creeper farms and i've been playing minecraft for like what is it 13 years? i've been playing minecraft since beta guys so like i've played this game for a long time but uh it's a pretty simple design it's a bunch of platforms i uh put some creep uh some cats in the corner and you know that obviously encourages them to jump off the 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 ledge here quicker and then obviously they jump down here and i get all the loot see the hoppers the hoppers take it and they take it and they move it into this little japanese little shack right here where we get oh where we get all the loot and see we uh we have a lot of gunpowder as you can see uh but we use a lot of it for like tnt and our and our rockets 
and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and for for my regular viewers for who are wondering about my rocket count, uh, man, I have probably one of the biggest rocket counts ever in a hardcore world, I think. Times used. This is rockets. Yeah, I've made over 700,000 rockets in about three about three-ish years of uh of playing in this world and have used a lot of them as well like it's i i need this creeper farm <laughs> I, i'll tell you that for sure but um yeah this area another really cool area in the world um i'm beyond proud of it um one of my most proudest areas in, in the world to be honest and uh yeah uh, and yeah uh let's go to the next area though let's uh let's take a quick little walk on to the next build. This is our most recent build. This is the build that we just finished. This is Shorts Made. This is a, if you like Harry Potter, you're gonna like this build. This is a Harry Potter inspired area. Inspired off of Hogsmeade and inspired off of Hogwarts. Uh, which I think turned out really, really cool. I don't, I've seen Harry Potter. I'm not the hugest fan, but I wanted to make this build for for short stack because she's a big fan uh, oh there's like me selling this cookies don't even worry about it but um but yeah this is just another little cute area let me actually get a good look for you guys so yeah this is shorts made oh oops so yeah this is shorts made it's a absolutely massive build uh i always have to turn up my runner distance when i'm streaming when i go to go go over to show it uh you guys can check out the most recent video if you guys want to go check this build out uh, from start to finish and how we made it and stuff, but yeah, we have the kind of the shorts the uh, hog hogs made kind of inspired area down here That the castle is very much inspired off of uh Hogwarts not a replica by any means. I don't like doing replicas uh, But it's definitely inspired off of it very much and then we have uh, the shrieking shack uh, It was what this was inspired off of over there. It's also really cool speaking of which uh, we're gonna go over there right now because we got another rare mob that rare mob being another diamond zombie um it was not a villager though it was just a normal diamond zombie so this is the second diamond mob that naturally spawned with diamond armor uh and uh this one i think actually has every piece enchanted it is absolutely absurd we got this around day uh, just day nine, uh, some, somewhere somewhere around nineteen thousand days. Is when we got that, we when we found him. But um, but yeah, just a quick little example. Um, just flying back in here. Uh, we see it's, we have some snow piled up here and there. Some of it's shoveled away. We placed a lot of string for this build, like a lot. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have an interior for every build as well. Uh, like I said. Um, then going up here, we have the castle itself. Uh, which I absolutely, this is probably one of my favorite castles in the world. Honestly, I really like how this turned out. We have this yellow vibe. So short stack is a Hufflepuff. Hopefully I remember that correctly. Uh, and uh, the Hufflepuff colors are, are, are kind of yellow and black kind of. So we kind of went with the yellow vibe in here. Nice little chandelier and stuff. And there is short stack uh, chilling on her throne. She has a God Apple because she has the most watch time out of anybody in my stream, she has watched my stream the most. And here is her husband, Yami, chilling, defending, and uh, doing his thing. All in all, though, I think this area is fantastic. And there's so many little intricate details in here that I absolutely love. And uh, I uh, definitely another one of my favorite builds in the world, for sure. For sure, for sure, without a doubt. Let's go to the next area, gamers. As you see, we're in a jungle. Um, but uh, this next build is, I'm not gonna spend much, is gonna be a really small section of the video because this is not much. Uh, this is the current build that we're working on. There's not much to show right now because it's in the very early stages. I thought I would still show it though because uh, I feel like people get discouraged so often when starting big builds and stuff. And, uh, and I, this is just, I just wanted to show it as a reminder that every build starts from somewhere. So this is the very early stages of a custom desert build that I'm doing. Very, very early stages. So you see where the dirt is? That used to be water. I terraformed it over. So that's the original desert. And then any pieces of water that... This is kind of a smaller desert, so I kind of have been expanding it. 
And uh, this is very early stage, so I've been placing a lot of sand, collecting a lot of sand. Uh, we have a bunch of our materials here, actually. Some dirt, a lot of sand, and stuff like that. And yeah, we've just been slowly filling in the sand, been filling in the water patches that are a little bit patchy, and just expanding it. This is going to be a huge build. I am so beyond excited to build this. This is going to be for my friend Zandingo, and I am going to be making this huge. Uh, I uh, I am so, so excited. There's so much that we have to do here. And I can't wait for you guys to see what I have in store for this build. I am beyond excited. Anyways, let's head back onto this path, and let's, uh, let's show you another build. All right. So this is the next build I'm going to show you guys. Uh, this is a very special build. This is... I have to go to the nether for this, because it's not actually connected by a path. But for good reason again. Alright, this build is a really cool build. This is what I like to call the Moment Monument. This is a build that I dedicated to my viewers as a whole. This, 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 this monument, this build carries memories. Uh, this is, this is, which is kind of the concept of the build here. Um, and I'll show you. I'll show you what the main purpose of it is. Um, this is why I showed it last. Um, yeah, this is definitely a really cool build. I spent a lot of time draining this project out, digging it down as well to a lower level, putting water at the bottom again, and then doing all the floating islands and the spikes and the, even the dragon flying through the middle. Just absolutely fantastic. Uh, going into here, jumping inside the monument is kind of the main purpose here. So inside the monument here, we have a bunch of armor stands dedicated to viewers. Uh, so anybody in my stream that has watched my stream, watch time-wise, for at least a month of time, they can redeem a guardian stand and get themselves into this build. Okay, now, but here's the lovely short stack, the, the person that we just did the most recent build for. Uh, she's full netherite, uh, she has her name on the sign, and here's a few of the badges that she has, she's collected, um, there's my boy Lime, you know, he has a little bit of a trim there, you can get trims on your stuff as well, uh, there's my boy Dame, um, there's a lot of people in here, there's a lot of really, really cool people, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, some people have fully decked out stands as well. This person, Lost Boy, shout out to Lost Boy. Uh, he has all uh, all gold silence. And you just level up your stands over time with channel points and, and watch time and stuff, which is really, really, really cool. Um, it got to the point, this got so popular to the point where I had to eventually make a, a, an expansion. There's KG, fully decked out as well. Um... But, uh, yeah, this is a really, really fun build to do. There's spookles over there. Uh, I had to make an expansion because it, it did actually get that deep. Down here, which I'm going to go back to a little bit later. We're going to go down here. This is where the portal is for this area. Jumping all the way down here. We have, so how we do that, by the way, how I don't take fall damage is, uh, powdered snow underneath this carpet and that negates all fall damage, which is really, really cool. Uh, this is random extra storage in here. This is the map of the area. This is one of the coolest maps in the world. Look at the symmetry on display. It just looks so, so, so cool on the map. I just thought I would show real quick one time for the one time. We had to make an expansion because there wasn't enough room in the monument itself. Here's some of the, the new new folks that have been able to get a uh, Guardian Stand, K, Puella, uh, Mushroom, Mi Ben... Uh, Blubber, Merle, you know, a bunch of bunch of homies, Toxic, Omar, Bind, Doug, a bunch of really, really cool people. And I hope to keep on expanding this. Uh, I hope that one day I could have this hallway just go on for thousands of thousands of blocks. Uh, that That is definitely a dream for sure. Like, imagine flying down here and just seeing... All the people that have supported you through throughout the years and stuff. And I, I can't wait to, to fill this up fully. I am so happy with this.
yeah, people are... Anybody who supports me can get into here. Uh, all you have to do is really watch and, and lurk the streams. And eventually, you can guys can get yourself an arm stand in the world. Uh, those are the two ways, the two ways to get into my world is via guardian stand and obviously an empire, which I think an empire is definitely cooler because you get a, you not only to get a build in my world, you get a video, a video dedicated to you as well onto my YouTube channel as well. It's just a, a really good bargain, I think. But yeah, we have uh, a bunch of other cool stuff in throughout this build. We have, uh, the slime over here. That uh, we saved while working on it. I forget exactly what his name is. Maybe when I'm doing the replay footage later, I could zoom in to see what it was. But yeah, he's just chilling and vibing in here. Um, then we have a few ruins on some of the on some of these uh, some of these islands over here. A book in the middle. Nothing. When I, I was gonna do something with the book in the middle, but I ended up not doing it. I think I have the same thing on the other side. Same kind of concept, more runes and stuff like that. Another book in the middle, kind of mysterious looking. I didn't actually end up doing anything with it. I think I was going to do some lore stuff, but I never actually got to it. Over here is uh, definitely like a, like a little, another mini castle, but this one is a only, it's only overgrown. It's not completely ruined like the other ones. Um, this one holds special, special moments. Uh, let me show you guys. So here is, we just filled up this wall. We're going to have to expand it. Yeah, this this holds a bunch of really special moments uh, that has happened over the years. This is the first world tour. Uh, this is when we hit 69, 69 followers on Twitch. Star Wars Day. Uh, the day I did my face reveal. When we hit 10K days. When we hit 100 IRL days of play time in the world. That was a big day for me. Um, when we hit 14,000 days. When we finished the rune build. When we did the swamp video. The swamp build video. 15,000 days. Two years of hardcore Minecraft. Uh, this is the 16,000 day book. Hold on, I'm running out of space here, gamers. Uh, this is the 18,000 day book. This is the 17,000 day book. This is the 19,000 day book. This is the shorts, shorts made build being finished. This is the 20,000 day book. When we hit 20,000 days, that was a very special day. This one was for 21,000 days. It looks like I forgot to name it. <laughs> I believe this was for 21,000 days, though. It looks like I forgot to name it. I was doing, I, I, I hit 21,000 days while doing a 100 hour stream. And before you ask, Yes, I slept in between, but yeah, we like to do we like to do juices. We like to do long streams and grind out projects and stuff. But yeah, another area in this build that is important to me is uh, underneath. Uh, I mentioned I lost my blue axe a lot earlier in the world, um, which was unfortunate. Um, however, um, we do have a bunch of other axe lot blue axolotls. So I so my original blue axolotl is gone, but that doesn't stop this wonderful blue axolotl pond from existing. Yeah, we have a bunch of blue axolotls in here named after viewers. They were spooky over there. Um, it was is that Ricky? Yeah, that's Ricky. Um, it turned out absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's a really cool from outside when looking in. Like you see, obviously this is floating. And you see this. It just looks really, really cool. Uh, I really, I really, I really, I really mess with that. I think you need two weeks of watch time on Twitch to get yourself into this pond. Special, very, very special uh, people in here who've supported, supported over the years. But yeah, this area turned out really cool. But yeah, the Moment Monument is definitely one, another one of my favorite builds in the world for sure. And uh, I think it turned out absolutely great. I'm uh, super, super proud of it. I think it's time to move on to some of the farms that I have in my world. Uh, some of them are a little bit spread out. Some of, so I, I, may, I may have showed some of the farms, but I'm just going to show you guys some of the ones in the nether. And some of them, some of the farms that I have in my mountain from earlier in the video. So let's get to it. While I'm here, though, before we do that, gamers, uh, we do have another. Mo so this monument is all aesthetic and it's all for, you know, 
for pe the, the people. This is another monument over here, but this is for a farm. So this is our garden farm here. I don't exactly remember whose design this is, uh, but I will put it on screen. Uh, but yeah, this is our guardian farm. We AFK up here. We have some beacons over there. Uh, and then they just go through. What else? Yeah, that's a pretty cool... It's a pretty simple farm. This is the other side of the guardian farm. As you see, we get a bunch of loot from it. Uh, and stuff. So that's our guardian farm there. And that this does wonders for me. We have a few farms chilling over here. We have this little beacon here. And what this beacon? This is our little basalt farm. Nothing in there right now because I usually just take from it immediately. This is our little hogland farm. I tend to switch from golden carrots and pork chops a lot. So I do use this from time to time. Uh, I haven't AFK'd in a while though. So I'm currently using golden carrots. But uh, yeah, that's my hogland farm. This is... Um, this is my... Uh, pig, piglin, piglin trading farm, I guess. Bartering farm, that's what it's called. This is my bartering farm, uh, and uh, as you can see, it, it does wonders as well. It does its thing. See, you can see that we have a lot of extra materials from it because of it. And obviously, with every bartering farm, you need a source of gold, right? So we have our gold farm. Uh, I think. Oh, by the way, I think, I think this that, that was a uh, logical geek boy design. But yeah, we have our gold farm as well over here. Uh, this is where I get my XP and my gold. Uh, but yeah, we have a little enchantment set up over there. We have a little auto sorter here. Uh, actually, the, probably one of the only auto sorters in the world, to be honest. But it gets pretty loud in here. Yeah, this is where this is where I get my XP from. I have some of the piglins in diamond, so I don't accidentally shoot them. When I want to run the farm, this is loud. Much better, but uh, yeah, this is my gold farm. El Mango design. This farm is made by uh, this. This is my frog light farm. This is a really cool farm. This is made by uh, my good friend Radical Elder. Uh, you guys should definitely go check him out as well. Uh, fantastic YouTube channel. Um, great hardcore series that he just started recently. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is it, it produces. Let me tell you, it produces. We got the frogs underneath, just absolutely having the times of their lives, just eating all the magma and, and stuff. So yeah, this next farm I'm about to show you is gonna take me a little while to get to, so I'm gonna fly over, and then I'll show you guys. It is our wood skeleton farm. Uh, this is something that most people don't normally get to see on stream. Uh, because I don't go there very often, but I do have a wither skeleton farm. So let me fly over there, and then I'll talk to you guys about it. Okay! Okay, so we have made it to our wither skeleton farm. This is a super underrated farm that you can make very early on in your world. Uh, I made it very late, because uh, I didn't feel like I needed a wither skeleton farm at the time. But uh, after wanting more beacons, I made this farm. So this is an Ian X04 design. And it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'll quickly, quickly try to explain how it works here for you guys. So you kind of wait here uh, as the wood the skeletons start to pour in, and then you just you whack them. This is how the other side works. This is uh, basically uh, they spawn here. When you're all the way up there, the rest of the fortress is not loaded, so only th they could spawn here. And they all pile up in through here because of the iron, go iron golem in the middle here. And yeah, it's pretty cool. If you jump, I believe you could uh, you despawn the blazes so you can get faster rates from time to time. But uh, yeah, that's how this works. It's a very genius design. But yeah, it's a pretty cool farm. And it works pretty fast as well. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. For sure. For sure. Without a doubt in my mind. Um... I think it's absolutely fantastic. Definitely very useful farm. But let's head back again, gamers, and we'll go show you some more farms. And we are back. We're back in the Japanese city at the moment. So we're back over here again, but this time I'm gonna be showing you guys a few of the farms that we have. They're nothing crazy, they're nothing too special. 
We have another, this is a really small netherwort farm, nothing crazy. We have this uh, wheat farm here, uh, which has been producing pretty well. It is full again. I have to empty that. That's a later me problem. We have this moss farm here that works pretty well. Uh, probably need to empty this as well. But yeah, you throw the, the bone meal in here. Pretty good. It's pretty cool. Pretty simple. We have our breeder here, which I am not going to lie. I forgot to turn off one day, and it left a bunch of villagers in here. There's still a bunch in here. Yeah, um... At least I won't be needing any villagers anytime soon. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, we have very simple uh, uh, nether farms here. I forget what they're called. Uh, but these are just very, both very simple. They give you uh, the nether items, the, the mushrooms and stuff. This is our turtle helmet farm or turtle, turtle farm. Uh, we have some scoots in here at the moment. This is a pretty decent, simple farm. We have a pretty massive sugarcane farm. So you see our creeper farm produces enough gunpowder for us. But we needed more sugarcane. So I have this module that is multiple layers. I have this module that is also multiple layers. This one that is also multiple layers. Another one. And another one. And this is in my spawn chunks. Uh, uh, this, this farm does not work in spawn chunks. I know. But uh, this... I'm in this area all the time anyway because it's my main base of operations, so it is running constantly. And because it is running constantly, because I'm always in the area anyway, we get a lot, and I mean a lot, of sugarcane. We are filled to the brim on sugarcane. Then we have our sheep farm here, which is also pretty cool. Pretty dope, pretty cool. Uh, we have wool for days and days and days. All different colors and stuff. Pretty simple, basic uh, wolf farm though. We have a few micro farms here for like flowers and glow lichen and snow. Really small chicken farm. This also, we also have a little pumpkin farm in here as well, which is definitely overflown because it is stopped moving because I have not emptied this in forever. <laughs> also got this little simple concrete uh, maker thingy here. It's not one of those TNT ones. We don't do any TNT duping in this world. As well as the spawn chunk iron farm. Which gives us all the iron that we need. I feel like some people go overkill with farms. Uh, I, uh, I have more than enough iron. And this is... I mean, see, it's already overfilling. And it's... Uh, it's just one of the basic ones. This is where I chopped down my trees for the most part. I have a little bit of obsidian there because sometimes I'll use TNT to blow up like mangrove trees. But for the most part, I chop down trees by hand. For example, I've mined over 153,000 spruce wood. I mine most of my trees by hand, gamers. I use a lot of spruce as well. Another little micro farm here. Just a little pickle farm. Nothing crazy. As well as a simple little bamboo, uh, bamboo farm, which is running and it's doing its thing. We also have a little firework system set up. I think it's currently empty because we just used it, but we put fireworks in here, and then from the outside, uh, you know, it, the fireworks just go crazy. See, did I visit everywhere? Hold on. Mushroom Meadows, Midori no Machi. Mushroom Meadows, Midori no Machi. That's going to do it for me today, guys. Oh, we're flying. We're flying, flying. But that's going to do it for me today, ga gamers. Uh... We have the world's second longest parkour world. For those wondering who's the first, it's, it's Linksy. Linksy is the GOAT. But uh, yeah, that we have the world's second longest hardcore world. Uh, thanks so much for watching and hanging and vibing with us. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I hope to see you guys uh, for the next world tour. I hope one day this world will hit 30,000 days and... Uh, I just hope to continue to grow this world more and more. I want nothing more than to do that. I hope that we continue to survive and thrive and do our thing like that. But guys, thanks so much for watching again. I appreciate you guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.